Do do di. It's Nandi. Hello, friends. It's Nandi, and I'm excited to bring you another video. This time about the newest character to join the ranks of Tacticus, Azrael. Azrael will be a Battle Pass release character, and today I'm going to show you exactly how many shards you can earn, go through the character and his abilities, as well as show you gameplay footage demonstrating them in action. At the end of the video, I've also got a bonus character infographic summarizing all of that information, as well as a calendar infographic for you to download. A lot of you mentioned that you enjoyed the lore last time, so I've included about a minute in the preamble here. To understand the Dark Angels and what makes them unique, we need to delve briefly into the history of the Primarchs. The Emperor of Mankind created 20 Primarchs who were designed to embody certain traits and attributes in order to lead a fighting force that would allow mankind to rule the galaxy. Through the forces of chaos, each Primarch was separated from the Emperor and came to rest on a different world. Lionel Johnson was created as the Primarch of the Dark Angels and settled on the world of Caliban. Caliban was known for its dark forests and lethal wildlife and it characterised how the Dark Angels fought and developed. They grew accustomed to the life of hunter and hunted and are fiercely competent fighters as a result. Led by their leader, the Lion, the Dark Angels purged their world of the beasts of chaos. Unfortunately, there was division within the ranks of the Dark Angels, and a fierce civil war saw their homeworld of Caliban destroyed. The last piece of rubble became known as the Rock, and it formed the Dark Angels' chapter fortress. The Lion entered a healing coma, and according to the lore, has just woken up, which is why the Dark Angels are being revitalized and brought anew into the Warhammer universe. Azrael, who we will cover today, served as the leader and chapter master for the Dark Angels while the Lion rested. Let's start by taking a look at Azrael himself. The first thing to say, I think, is that his character model looks fantastic. The art department, um, time and time again, outdo themselves and continue to excel. I think he looks awesome. He's got a really cool sword and a really cool plasma pistol. Um, yeah, awesome model. Well done to the art department. He's even got a banner with his name on it behind him. Just great stuff. The next thing to talk about is his stats. You can see he's got a movement of 3, and that's his health, damage, and armor scaled to level 50. I'll come back to that later on in the infographic. In terms of his attacks, he's got a melee and a ranged attack. He's got a plasma ranged attack with 1 hit and a 65% pierce ratio. Uh, and his power attack does 3 hits, and we're very familiar with power uh, as a damage type. You'll notice that his defensive item is the Iron Halo, which, which has the increased 35% block chance compared to the normal 30% force fields. And that combines with a block booster to give him an overall 40% uh, block chance. Traits-wise, he's got Final Vengeance, which we've seen in the game before. Um, and the second trait is Overwatch. We can then move on and have a look at his skills. Dark Talon Strike is where Azrael calls in a Ravenwing Dark Talon to do massive damage to a target within two hexes, and then does a Bolter Damage strafing run at targets behind it. It also applies Suppressed to all targets affected, reducing damage and movement. It's worth bearing in mind that although a powerful effect, it only has a two hex range. Next, let's look at Azrael's passive, Lion's Helm. This is an aura applied to friendly units within two hexes that increases their block amount and damage while overwatching. It also gives friendly Dark Angels a bonus to block. Here we can briefly see Azrael's active in action. He moves within two hexes of Snapareka and targets him doing massive damage to Snapareka as well as suppressing and doing damage to all of the orcs standing behind him. I'm going to move on and show you this season's battle pass. I'm going to do some quick math as we go, but feel free to rewatch if you're interested to see what prizes are on offer. We've got two and five, seven. And three, ten. And ten, twenty. And five, twenty-five. And fifteen, forty. Forty-five. 60, 65, 85, 
105, 130, 140, 150, sorry, 165, 195, and uh, another 55 so that takes us up to 250 total which i believe is enough for an epic unlock if you complete the whole battle pass there you go azrael the chapter master for the dark angels i'm trying something new where i'm summarizing each character onto a single infographic if you think this is useful i can keep doing this for new characters moving forward one thing i want to draw your attention to is the radar chart in the bottom right hand side of the infographic in order to come up with these numbers, I have calculated Azrael's stats as a percentage of the character who's currently best in slot in that area. The math for this goes back to the stats video that I did a while ago with the help of Tawan, a Tacticus ambassador and a member of the Eternal Nexus cluster. For example, Cut Skoden currently has the most armor for a playable character in the game. Azrael's armor stat is 69% of cuts when they are both equally equipped and at the same rarity. I think this representation allows you to see where a character does well or poorly in a more visual faction, and you can tell from Azrael's radar chart that we're looking at a fairly vanilla stat cascade. Where do I think Azrael will do well? I think the short answer is PvP. His active is incredibly powerful and he's got a lot of block and overwatch mechanics that we know are very powerful in that game mode. I can't see him easily slotting into the current guild raid meta, which is dominated by Eldrion and characters who do multi-hits. However, time will tell, and particularly with the release of future Dark Angels characters, we may get a better inclination as to where he stands overall. Included here is a calendar of all of the events for this patch. It will be available for access and download along with all of my other infographics on the Tacticus wiki, which I'll include a link to in the video description. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please let me know what you think in the comments section. I read everything that you guys post, even if I don't always comment back, and your messages are genuinely what keeps me going to make more content. If you're in the position to enter my refer a friend code, as you can see on screen, I'd really, really appreciate it. It goes a long way in supporting me, and I want to say a big thank you to all of you that have already done so. Since recording this video initially, Snowprint have kindly agreed to give out two Azrael giveaways to content creators, so I'm doing this little add-on at the end. If you'd like to be entered into this giveaway, then please leave a comment below, and I'll randomly pull the winner in a few days. Please remember to check back to see if I've replied to your comment to see if you're one of the winners of the epic Azrael unlock. Good luck! Finally, if you're looking to join a new guild, there is a new guild raid boss coming up and you're going to want to maximize your chances of success. Pants of Horus is always recruiting players and we still have a couple of slots before our guilds fill up. Don't miss that opportunity to join us. 14 out of the top 50 guilds last season were in our cluster, and we can really help you progress, give you advice, and chat about all the fun stuff in between. The Discord link is in the video description. I also owe a lot to Tawin for the constant help and stat work that he does. He's a member of the Eternal Nexus cluster, who are a smaller but equally capable and friendly group of players. I'll include a link to their Discord in the video description as well. Thanks everyone for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. I'm always covering the latest Tacticus content, so stay tuned. Bye for now. Doo -doo -dee. It's Nandi!